Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? All praises to Yahweh, Bahashum, Yahweh Shai, Bahashum Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity. And you know, um, when you win this truth, you know, one of the main things that you deal with is worrying. You know, and that's just the, the plague of the flesh. You know, which is an infirmity by itself, you know, and that's the lesson I want to get into. And I just want to show you that, you know, great men that we strive to be like and can possibly be in the reincarnation. But, you know, as it's saying, Romans 15 and 4, that whatsoever was written was written, um, was for whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning, you know. We're supposed to learn from the great men and we're supposed to conduct ourselves the way that they did, you know. So this is the beloved, literally the beloved King David, you know, and even King David have he had worries. Every all great men had worries because one thing, as the scripture said, the flesh profit nothing. So that's the lesson I want to get into. So Psalm 77 and 7 Will the Lord cast off forever and will he be favorable no more? So when you walking in this journey, you seeing all the things that's going through, all the things that's happening to our people daily. Once you come into the truth, you actually seeing the destruction of our people and how it seemed like it's not getting no better. You know, you, you looking at this devil, so-called white man, Esau, Edom. The things that he wanted to do to the children of Israel. He signed in all these unrighteous decrees. You know, through his policy, he just he trying to destroy us. So, you know, King David was a prophet too, because this is relevant to this time. So is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai gonna cast us off forever? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail evermore? You know? Sometimes you get in that spirit, especially when you're getting beat down. You know, I'm not that man that's about to act like I'm a super Israelite. I have weak moments. You know, the flesh profit nothing, man. But we're going to get into how, even though this video is about infirmities, but we're going to get into how the Lord got us in our infirmities. You know? So is is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he anger shut up his tender mercies? Say la. And sometimes you get in this spirit. Majority of the time you in this spirit. Because the scriptures talks about, you know, chastisement is not uh, joyous, but grievous. As it's saying Hebrews 12 and 11. So when you're going through chastisement, you feeling like the world is against you. You feeling like everybody against you. You feel like the most high don't love you at them times. But guess what? If you meditate on the scriptures, he really do love you. In that, in that same chapter in Hebrews 12, talks about if, you, if he didn't chast you, you would be not a son to him. So imagine all the people that's walking this life that don't have the problems of men of the Lord do. You think LeBron James is sleeping at night, worried about how he's going to, you know, pay his bills or worried about, um, you know, he he's actually doing what he wanted to do. From a kid, he wanted to play basketball. He ended up being in the NBA. He almost a billionaire playing fucking basketball, man. Why you got men of the Lord. But the thing is, the scripture said this is not our rest. So the thing is, you have to glory in being in this situation because and when you receive your consolation, as the scripture said, woe unto him who are rich for they have received a consolation. You're not rich. You're waiting to receive your consolation. Guess what your consolation consists with? Eternal life, being righteous, having everything that your heart desire. 
So when you're going through things, you always be like, have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? You feel like that sometimes. And it's okay, though. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai got us. 10. And I said, this is my infirmity, which is the main reason why I wanted to make this video. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. We all know who at the right hand of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, which his name means he delivers. And he is the one that's going to deliver us for everything captivity, the plague of the mind, the plague of this flesh. He's going to deliver us from everything. And in, in verse 11, I will remember the works of Yahweh. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. So when you actually reading, reading these scriptures, man, you got to read it and you got to see it. As I say in Proverbs 29 and 18, where, is the, where there is no vision, the people perish, man. So you got a vision. When you read these scriptures, first of all, you got to believe. That's number one, because it's impossible to please the Most High without faith, as I say in Hebrews 11 and 6. But you got to have that vision, man. You got to envision, you know, the um, the three Hebrew boys in the, in the furnace and Yahweh Shai being there with them and, and not a lick of fire touched them. OK, that's the type of faith that you got to have. That's the type of vision that you got to see. Now, 10, you know, what is this affirmity in this um, these four scriptures that I read? Five scriptures worrying the biggest. Infirmity that we have is the plague of the mind. Now, when you look up the word infirmity in the Hebrew, it's kala, and it means to be sick, to feel sick, to be diseased, to become weak. All the things that we go through. And it starts with the mind. Because when you're going through something, instead of jumping to the scriptures, right, um, you know, as soon as something happened, your flesh react. You react carnally. And the spirit that's inside you. It's what sustain you, which we're going to get later in the lesson. You know? Yeah, how will Bashimi, how will Shah got your back, even in your infirmities? But we have infirmities, and this is the thing that we're looking forward to, to be saved from. That's what he's delivering us from. Not just captivity itself, okay? But this body. This this corruptible body is going to put on incorruptible, man. Imagine never having to worry about nothing. You can't imagine that. Let's get that real quick. Prove that you can't imagine that because the Lord said this. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the mind of men. Because that's what heart means in Hebrew, la'ab. The things which the Most High have prepared for them that love him. So you can't even fathom not even not having to worry about something. You can't even fathom having multiple wives upon, upon multiple wives and they all just love you. They want to worship you. They want to satisfy you. They ain't looking at no other man. You can't even imagine that. Matter of fact, you can't even imagine one woman being all about you to the point of she don't even see another man. Of course, she going to tell you that. But is that really true? Imagine having a woman, one woman that just want to worship you and do whatever you say. You can't even fathom that. Now, imagine multiple. That's, that's a small thing. I'm, I'm just using a woman as an example. That's, cause that's crazy to me. <laughs> that's, that is a miracle. Now, going back to the affirmity, you know, that's the one thing that we all deal with. And all the great men deal with this. Everybody going to deal with this. We're not in our perfected state. Now, from here, I want to go to Proverbs Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, 
It is a tree of life. So when you waiting for something, that's what deferred mean when something is postponed, when something is delayed. All right. So while we walk in this walk and we waiting on the salvation of our power, the heart is sick. It's something that you can't get get through. Prayer, fasting and things like that is what gets you through better, but it still don't heal all the way. Because guess what? If we didn't go through these things, then what is the Lord delivering us from? See, that's why the scriptures say in Psalms 34 and 18 that he is near unto them that have a um, broken heart and save as such as those that have a contrite spirit. Because those are the men that he's looking for. He's looking to bless his sons and daughters, man. Ones that are actually depending on him the ones that's actually humbling themselves and stop acting like they're a super israelite like they don't go through nothing like they super strong you call in the lord a liar and you do have men that are stronger than others that's why the scripture said bear the affirmities of the weak the ones who are stronger but we all have affirmities man and the main affirmity is worrying that's the main one so, but to say, but when the desire cometh, that's talking about Yahweh Shai coming back to deliver his captives, okay? To give us the new body, to give us the kingdom, give us the desires of our heart and righteousness, because what righteousness is the one that brings life and death, sin brings death. So while we in the sinful flesh, we can't live. That's why the scriptures say uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So, guess what? Your heart is sick, man. And we all need a healer. Matter of fact, what's that scripture? Let me see if I can find it real quick. Need not a physician. Okay, Matthews 9 and 12. But when Yahweh Shah heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they are sick. And that's who he came for. He ain't come for people who don't need a physician. He came to people who need a physician. All right. Now, through all the, you know, the having a sick. You know, making having a heart, having a sick heart, you know, through all of that. Yeah, how will Bashi me? How will Shai got us? You know, and it's so beautiful because when you are weak, these scriptures do help you. That's why they call the comforter, man. And when you read them and you believe in them and, you, and the Lord start to sup with you, you know, the things that you go through and then you overcome it, you become strong. Now, I don't know how many people watch Dragon Ball Z, but that's my favorite cartoon of all time because it's spiritual, too. And to be honest, I'm really starting to think that the sands is Israelites, you know, through the spirit. But one thing about the sands, right? Every time they, they get beat to an inch of their life, when they heal, they become stronger. And that's the same thing that happens to a man of the Lord when they overcome something. You know? When you overcome something, even the worldly saying say like whatever don't kill you make you stronger, right? And that's very true on the spiritual side. So when you overcome whatever the Lord put you through, you do become stronger. You're supposed to at least. If you don't, this is what the scriptures say, the next scripture that I'm going to get. Now, if you don't, then the spirit. I'm just going to let the, speech, the, the scripture speak. So it say the spirit of a man will sustain his affirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. OK, so the spirit that's inside you, which is the thing I just said, it makes you stronger when you overcome. Whatever don't kill you, make you stronger. Right. But a wounded spirit who can bear. That's the one that the Lord is not dealing with. The Lord is dealing with strong people, man. And guess what? If you do fall out and you do have a weak spirit, then yes, of course, the Lord ain't dealing with you because those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. That's why you got to constantly pray. That's why you got to humble yourself and ask the Lord for strength that you can endure.
But a wounded spirit ain't going to do that. They just going to fall away. Okay? So, the spirit will sustain your infirmity, man. So, when you overcome that, it's your spirit that's inside you. All right? Let's get this to talk about how your spirit and flesh, what is their duty? See, for which cause we faint not. This is why we don't faint. But though our outward man perish, talk about this flesh, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. It strengthen itself. Your spirit inside you strengthen itself day by day. You have a problem Monday and you overcome it. Tuesday, you're stronger. If you have a problem Monday through Thursday, Friday, you're going to be stronger. Okay? The flesh is going to perish. All right? The spirit is what sustain you. And it renew itself day by day. Now from here. Let's say likewise the spirit also. Here we go with the spirit again. Also help with our infirmities. For we know that we should pray for as we ought. Salakia. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself make of intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. OK, so the spirit is actually speaking on your behalf. That's the antenna to Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai, man. The spirit is the antenna to Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai, because as the scripture just said, you don't know what to pray for. That's why sometimes when you start praying, you get all flabbergasted. You get all can't put your words together because you so beat down. But your spirit inside of you is already making groanings and utterings that you can't do. Imagine that, man. We all sick. We all have infirmities. But the spirit, which is grace and mercy, that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah put in certain of us, and Lord willing, I continue. That spirit, man, is what sustain us, man. Now, from here, We're going to end it on this. Because this is, this is the main reason why we able to, you know, overcome. And this is why this man, Yahweh Shai, deserve to be praised with all your might. Hebrews 4 and 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the son of the most high, let us hold fast our profession. That's why the Lord said that we overcame him by his blood and the word of our testimony, man. And we love not our life unto death. So that's our profession, man, our testimony. 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our affirmities. Why he is able to fill our affirmities. Let's continue to read. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So imagine you, how Shai came down here in the flesh, walked the earth, tempted like how we get tempted. But guess what? He ain't have no sin. He ain't have no sin. Now imagine that. So that means he conquered death. All right. And he is our instruction guy of how to conquer death and how to conquer these affirmities. He is the only one that can give us the strength to overcome our affirmities. See, the difference is we're not the only begotten of the most high, but we still his children. And if we believe on him, as I say in John 3, 16, we will have everlasting life. And that's what we're striving for. And only Israel can get that promise. Because we're the only one that made a covenant with him by sacrifice. And right now, the spiritual sacrifice that we're making is making our body a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. 
but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we should that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And when you have faith and when you are rooted and grounded and you really believe that Yahweh Shai can take you out of any situation. That's when you come boldly to the throne, respectfully, of course. But you tell the Lord what you need, man. And that's beautiful, man, that we have a man that was able to come down here to conquer death, man, that we can have eternal life. And Lord willing, I'll be a part of that. And all the men that's out here making their body a living sacrifice and really believing on Yahweh Shai. We just got to continue to be stay prayed up and to come boldly to the throne, man, and tell the Lord what we need. And he already know. He just wants you to ask. So hopefully this video was edifying and shalom.